Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be giving a full update on the dividend portfolio for the month of September. I'll show all of the dividend payments I received in September, what our capital gains over the last month was, and all of the changes that I made to my portfolio. There was actually a good amount of changes, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to hear why I made the changes that I did. As I'm sure some of you have noticed, I have not released a video in about three weeks. I'll be more consistent with the videos moving forward, and I'm currently working on a pretty substantial video about my time as a Tesla shareholder and some of the lessons I've learned along the way. Also, I would like to get you guys more involved in the videos that I make, and I think a good way of doing that is a portfolio review series. So if you guys want me to take a look at your portfolio and give some feedback, Drop your M1 Finance portfolio links down below and I will get through as many portfolios as I can. And if you haven't signed up for M1 Finance yet, make sure to use the link in the description below and when you fund your account with $100 in the first 30 days, you'll get a 10% bonus and you will be helping out the channel as 10% will also be put into the portfolio that you will see in this video. With all that said, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post a new video. And let's jump into the portfolio update for the month of September. So in September, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 2%, while the S&P lost 4% and the NASDAQ lost 5%. This month was the first sign in a while that this fast run up in stock prices that we've seen over the last six months may not be sustainable. Stock market investors were worried about different news items, about fiscal stimulus talks in Congress, the upcoming United States presidential election, and has been the case for the majority of the year, the coronavirus. Many of the largest losers this month were some of the tech giants and tech companies that have seen unreal performance so far in 2020, like Tesla. However, despite all the market fluctuation, the dividend portfolio did fairly well in addition to generating more dividends than they did in the previous month. The portfolio started up the month with a total value of $5,300. And over the course of the month, a total of $600 was deposited into the account. And when the account finished the month, the value is $5,850, reflecting a $50 loss or about 1%, which is better than all major indices in the month of December. This reflects one of the key upsides of having a portfolio of strong, stable companies. When the stock market turns negative, the kind of stocks that I have in my portfolio tend to remain fairly stable. In the month of September, this portfolio received $12.95 of dividend payments from eight individual companies. The largest and first payment of this month on September 1st came from Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE with a $3.46 dividend. Next, on the 8th, another one of my healthcare holdings, Johnson & Johnson, paid me $1.84. Then on the 10th, I received three different dividend payments from Microsoft, Raytheon, and Target, which added up to another $3.60. Then, five days later, came Realty Income Corp and Nextera Energy, which paid me $0.58 cents and $1.94 respectively. And then to finish off the month, Waste Management paid me $1.53 on September 18th. Almost all these companies have their own analysis video on this channel, so if any of those interest you, make sure to watch those in the stack analysis playlist that I will have linked at the end of this video. To put September into context, let's take a look at the monthly dividend chart that I have on the screen now. As you can see, of the months that have already happened, the blue bars, September was the highest dividend month in this portfolio's history. But if you watch some of the portfolio updates in the past, you'll notice something different about this chart. I've decided to add the projected dividend payments that I can expect to receive from this portfolio. By the end of 2021, I should be receiving dividend payments each month of around $40, which is so much higher than the month of September that we just experienced. Now the significance of this graph during a month like August when I only received $6 in dividends is that over time, this will grow. And in a month like September, when I've had the highest dividends received in the portfolio's history, that this is nothing compared to where the portfolio should be in the future. You can see this play out on the quarterly dividend chart as well. In Q3, the portfolio received almost $30 in dividend payments, 
which is substantially higher than the $11 received in Q2. But even Q4 this year is expected to be so much higher, and that's with pretty conservative estimates. So as long as I continue to pick strong, dividend-paying companies to invest in, and I continue to deposit $150 per week, this is only the beginning. And just for fun, I decided to see how much money this portfolio would generate for me by the time I reached the age of 60. And it would produce an annual income of over $50,000 for me. Which, because inflation exists, may not be enough to live off completely, but it is still a significant amount of income. If there's one thing I can tell you guys about investing that I have learned is that you need to be patient. When I started this portfolio, I was investing a very small amount of money. And although it is much larger now, it is still small relative to where it should be. But in 2021, within two years of creating this portfolio, I will be receiving almost $400 in additional annual income, which is small, but still a significant amount of money of additional income by just letting my money work for me. Now let's jump into the portfolio and talk about some of the changes that I've made over the last month. And we will start with some of the changes to my overall portfolio and then talk about changes to the individual pies and new stocks that I've included. As has been the case for the last couple months, real estate is the largest part of my portfolio with a 25% allocation. Financials last month was 18% of my allocation, and I decided to increase this slightly to 20%, because I continue to believe that these companies I have are strong and the dividend payments will grow. Plus, I continue to believe that these stocks are being punished unjustly, and at some point the market will begin to value them correctly. Next up, I have tech which is still 14% of my portfolio, but really this is because of a reclassification that I decided to do in my portfolio. AT&T was previously 40% of my tech portfolio, but I decided to make a separate telecom pie which includes AT&T and another company that I will reveal in a little bit. So even though my tech pie allocation remains the same since last month at 14%, it is still in a way larger because I believe telecom and tech are so close to each other and collectively they now make up 20% of my portfolio whereas last month they were 14. Next up, the industrials and consumers pies have shrunk a little bit to allow for the increase in financials and tech and telecom. However, I have decided to decrease healthcare from 14% of my portfolio down to 8%. I made this decision because I don't have the same level of understanding of healthcare that I do in some of these other industries. I still want to have some skin in the healthcare market, but because it's not really my key area of competence, I've decided to make it a smaller portion of my portfolio. And then to finish off the pies, energy and utilities remain at 6% the same as last month. And now to touch on some of the changes within these specific pies. In tech, as I mentioned, AT&T has been removed and put it to its own pie, and with this change came the addition to the portfolio. I've decided to add Oracle into the portfolio and give it a 40% allocation within my tech pie. Oracle is a large company who sells database software, technology, cloud computing systems, and enterprise software. With a market cap of about $190 billion, they're one of the largest software companies in the world and they currently have a P.E. ratio under 12, while currently paying a dividend of 1.6%. I plan to make a separate video on them in the near future, but to say the least right now, I'm very excited about investing in this company. I also decided to decrease my allocation in Facebook a little bit, as I'm a little worried about some of the impending antitrust legislation that I believe will be coming from Congress. Every day, I see a new news story about them banning different people from their platform, which is a threat to investors because every time they limit any voice, whoever it is, they act as a publisher and not as an open platform, which could open them up to massive legal battles if they overstep. I still like the company, but I may continue to decrease my position in them if some of these actions continue. In addition to Oracle, I decided to add one more stock to my portfolio, and it's actually one that I did a video on recently, Verizon. Although in my video I mentioned that I still like AT&T better as a standalone investment, I think Verizon has very good qualities, like their focus on telecommunications, 
and their more conservative dividend policy and debt management. So in my new Telecom Pi, I have 70% of that dedicated to AT&T because I do like them a little bit better than Verizon, but I still want some exposure to Verizon, so that's why I gave them 30%. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and I hope I was able to explain the rationale behind my decisions clearly. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I want to see your portfolio in the comments below, and I will be making videos giving my opinions on them and possibly giving some feedback, so make sure you leave those links in the comments. If you enjoy this kind of content, let me know by leaving a like on the video and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a future upload, and I will see you guys in the next video.